On a hot summer evening in 1992, neighbors heard the familiar sound of an argument coming from the Campano residence. According to Christopher Campano, his wife left the house shortly after their argument to calm down. Karen Campano was never seen again. Karen Campano was just two weeks shy of her 43rd birthday when she disappeared. She had just come back to Oklahoma City after visiting her three children who were living in New York. Back to the home she shared with her third husband, Chris. She come back from New York and she was talking about moving back because of her family and, and uh, she's upset. Chris and Karen Campana were married in December of 1987. Friends described them as an odd couple. She was 15 years older than Chris, and it was her third marriage, his first. They were introduced to one another by Karen's best friend, who also happened to be Chris's mother. Chris was a drifter, worked construction jobs, and spent some time in jail for petty theft. Karen was the main wage earner, working as a bill collector for this credit adjustment company in town. On the evening of July 1st, 1992, Chris and Karen had one of their frequent arguments, this time over his use of drugs. And I was into drugs, and, and uh, she was, you know, nagging at me and trying to get me in drug programs, and, you know, just trying to help. It was loud enough for the neighbors to hear. I could hear Karen screaming and no, please, please, and don't do that. And couldn't make out a lot of what was being said, just a lot of screaming. According to Chris, after the argument, Karen left the house for a walk, headed to the buy for less convenience store for some personal items a few blocks away. Chris left too, driving to a local bar for a few drinks, staying until about midnight. The next morning, Chris called Karen's office to see if she had reported to work. Her supervisor said she hadn't shown up or even called in. Chris then phoned the police to report her missing. When the police arrived to take Chris's statement, they looked around briefly and reported seeing no evidence of foul play or anything out of place or unusual. If a person is going to run away or, or leave her husband, She's not just going to walk away and leave everything behind. She's going to take the things that mean the most to her, especially when you're dealing with a woman, things of, you know, toiletries, makeup, and that kind of thing. And, of course, we found all those things intact in the bedroom and in the bathroom, and it was as if she just disappeared off the face of the earth without taking anything with her. While the police were there, Chris mentioned that the house had been burglarized the night before while he was out drinking and that some items were missing. Police asked Chris to sign a waiver to allow a search of the house. And he agreed to do so and, and thought that would be good and even commented that he hoped that we found something in the house that would help us with the investigation. The first thing I recall seeing is, is the bed was against the south wall and right next to the bed was a large white trash bag. And underneath that trash bag, I could see a, a very large brownish colored stain. Of course, the next thing we did was uh, went and got some hema sticks, which we carried in our vehicle. A hema stick is a chemical strip that can immediately tell whether or not blood is present. Take the dry hema stick and with your finger just lightly smear it on the suspect stain to where some of it's transferred onto the hema stick. Take a drop of distilled water, put it on the hema stick flick off the excess water and you have a dark green which is a positive presumptive test for the presence of blood the stain on the carpet was indeed blood but was it human 
And if so, whose was it? The first day we were in the house, uh, I put on a pair of gloves and that spot on that uh, carpet was still moist. This piece of carpet and the padding was completely soaked with blood. It was such a massive amount of blood that there was still actual moisture involved there. It was not completely dry. The carpet was removed and delivered to the Oklahoma City Police Department's forensic chemistry lab. I went on to do a um, octolone test. is a species determination test to determine as to whether or not that blood came from a human or an animal source. It was human blood. That was enough to convince me that we weren't dealing with a routine missing persons case. The police needed more to go on and felt the answers lay inside the Campano's house. When police discovered human blood inside the Campano's bedroom, they suspected the blood stain might belong to Karen Campano. They also suspected that Chris knew more about her disappearance than he was admitting. She left at 7.30. What did you do then? I went to... Under police questioning, Chris maintained that he knew nothing about his wife's whereabouts, but his alibi was weak. The bartender didn't recall seeing Chris Campano on the night of July 1st and police discovered that Chris had pawned some of Karen's jewelry the morning after her disappearance. Without a body, the only thing left for the police to do was run more tests inside the house. There weren't any visible signs of violence besides the blood stain they found in the bedroom. We saw a typical little frame house for central Oklahoma City that uh, as you went inside looked quite clean, quite neat. Things had been cleaned out of it. Walls looked clean, ceiling looked clean, the floor looked clean. So there wasn't much to see at all. So they decided to look for blood which may have been cleaned up or wasn't visible to the naked eye. 